In this video, I'm going to share with you five perspective drawing techniques that will improve your art. Before this video starts, I'd like to give a quick shout out to a project that I have been working on with Stedler called the Design Journey Art Class. If you enjoy drawing in perspective, then this course is worth checking out. Also, it's free, so there's literally no reason not to. There are seven full length videos in this art class walking you through the basics of perspective, gradually introducing more complex techniques, as well as showing you how to render your drawings realistically in pencil. I really recommend having a look, it took a while to put together, and it's suitable for any aspiring artist looking to learn more about perspective drawing. There's a link in the description. I'm going to begin by showing you how to scale objects in your drawing because as you probably already know, things appear smaller or larger the further or closer they are to us. And so this is something you have to consider when creating a drawing along with the actual size of what you are drawing. Fortunately, it's very simple to scale the size of something around your drawing in perspective. Around here, for example, I'll draw out a vertical line like so. Imagine this to be the height of anything in your drawing, like the side of a building or a person. And let's say that I want to place another one further back. We know it's going to be smaller, but how do we get the exact height it should be? Well, firstly, we need to know where the horizon line is, which is something you've likely drawn out already if you are creating a drawing in perspective. I've already drawn mine in here. The next thing we need to know is where you want to place the new line and then create a point. Let's say that I want it here. The next step is to take a line from the bottom of the first line through to this new point and continue to extend the line until it meets the horizon line. I know that I'm saying line a lot but hopefully if you are following along this makes sense. Anyways, this creates a vanishing point that we can use to transfer the height of this line back and to do that I take a line from the top of this back to that same point on the horizon line. I can now draw in a new vertical line up from this point until it meets this line and it's going to be the exact same height as the first one except of course it appears smaller in perspective. So hopefully that was easy to understand but before I move on let me draw a few more lines around the drawing at the same size. If for example I wanted to move a new line directly to the left or to the right, it wouldn't change in size because it's not moving back and forth, just side to side. And so I can simply project some horizontal lines across like so and draw that in. However, if I did want to move another line either further forwards or further backwards, I could do so by finding firstly where I want the new line to be, let's say up here, and then I can use any of the existing lines I already have here to transfer across the same height. And so I just do the same again, even though this is further forward, I take a line from this point through the bottom of this one and extend it until it meets the horizon line. I then take a line from that point on the horizon line through the top of this existing line and extend it until it's over my new point. I can now draw in my new vertical line. So that's how to scale objects in your drawing, it's incredibly useful to know how to do that. So now let's take a look at how to divide planes in perspective, and I don't mean planes that fly, I mean planes as in the sides of a box or a, a surface of an object you are drawing in perspective. To demonstrate this one, I'll start by drawing out a flat rectangular plane and then a rectangular plane in perspective next to this. Here the lines for this one in perspective are converging back to a vanishing point on the horizon line. So the reason why I have drawn one flat plane and one in perspective is so that I can demonstrate this technique using the flat plane first and then show you how the same can be done in perspective. So here I want to divide up this plane. A common reason why you'd want to do this when drawing is to find the center of a plane, which can easily be done by taking two diagonal lines from corner to corner, like so. Where these cross will be the center point. And so I can then draw out a vertical halfway line and a horizontal halfway line. As a result, I have divided this up into quarters and if I wanted to, I could repeat what I had just done within one of these quarters and divide that up the same way. 
So that's pretty simple on a flat plane like this one, but what about when you are dealing with foreshortened planes in perspective? Well, you do the exact same. Here on this plane, I take a line from corner to corner to find the center point, and here I can then draw in that vertical halfway line and then the horizontal halfway line, which isn't actually horizontal here because it's converging to the vanishing point. I have now divided up this plane the same way, and as you can see, that half that's further back appears smaller than the half which is further up front due to foreshortening. So that is how to divide up planes in perspective, something that I find myself doing all of the time when drawing. Now, I'm going to stick with this example here because it leads into the next one, which is how to multiply planes in perspective. So the reason why I still have what we had just drawn in front of me here is because in order to multiply a plane in perspective, it requires you to firstly divide it up. I guess I'm being lazy because I'm just using this example where we already have divided up these planes, so do keep in mind that whenever you want to multiply a plane in perspective, it does require you to firstly divide it up like so. I will show you another example in a moment, but let's firstly use this flat plane here. To multiply this, which means I'm going to duplicate the same plane at either side, I firstly need to decide on the direction I want to do this in. And seeing as I don't have any space to the left here, I'm going to have to do this to the right. So now that I know that, I extend the top and bottom lines of this plane in that direction. So, in reality, if I wanted to duplicate the dimension of this flat square and draw another one next to it, I could just measure it with a ruler and draw another one, but it's not that simple when it comes to drawing in perspective, because again, we need to consider the foreshortening, so again I'll do the same on this flat plane as I would in perspective, which is firstly to divide it up, like I have already done, and then take a line from the bottom corner here, through this point, which is where the horizontal halfway line meets the edge of the plane, and I extend this line until it meets this line, the top of the plane which I extended at the start. Where these lines meet will be where I can then draw in a new vertical line, which is the edge of my duplicated plane. And this plane is the same size as this one. So that was pretty simple to do, and it's just as simple when it comes to planes in perspective. Again, I'll duplicate this square to the right, so I'll extend my lines in that direction, which I already have done, seeing as they are converging to that vanishing point anyways. And then I take a line from the bottom corner and extend this through that halfway point, continuing this until it meets this line. This is where I can then draw in the edge of my new plane, which will again appear smaller as it's further away. So here, to give you another example, I'm drawing out another plane in perspective, which I will divide up and multiply. I need to firstly divide this up like so. I take a line from corner to corner to find the center point. I then draw in the halfway lines. Now I need to decide on the direction in which I want to duplicate this plane. I'll do this to the right, and I don't need to extend my lines here because I have already done that when drawing the plane to the vanishing point. Now I take a line from the bottom corner through the halfway line at the edge and continue this until it meets this line, where I can then draw in the edge of my duplicated plane. And here I could repeat that same technique to duplicate this one. And so it's a, a very useful way to draw the posts of a, a fence, for instance, or anything within your drawing that needs to be equally spaced apart in perspective. I'm also going to add another plane at the front here to the left, and this time I'll have to extend these lines over. And now I do the same, except I will do it from the opposite side. This line extends through that halfway line and continues until it meets the top extended line. I then draw in the edge of the new plane. So you can see how this technique has a lot of potential. These lines, which are edges of the square, are all equally divided. The planes are the same size. It's really simple to do and will instantly improve your drawings. 
So when it comes to creating a drawing in perspective, it can be tricky when you are tasked with directing your lines to a vanishing point that is likely off the page. The further away it is, the harder it is because you have to judge the convergence of your lines and have them directed to the vanishing point. However, there is a way to completely avoid having to do this and that is to use a grid. Now, I'm creating a selection of grids over time that I've uploaded to my Patreon page which you can download and use and these can assist you when drawing in perspective because all you need to do is have the lines that you draw converge with the grid lines. Now whilst I created these grids digitally, it is possible to draw a grid on your paper as you plan out your drawing. I have a video on the channel which discusses the Brewer method and this allows you to construct a grid even when the vanishing points are off the page. It does take some explaining though, so I don't want to cover that in depth here when I have already made a video on it, but I had to include grids somehow in this video because they are incredibly useful. So the final technique I want to mention here is using boxes to draw objects in perspective. Almost anything can be constructed using basic forms such as boxes, cylinders, cones and spheres. All of these are basic forms which can be used to draw more complex forms. The reason why I have placed this one at the end here is because all of the previous techniques that I've shown you in this video can come into play when constructing a drawing which generally involves drawing boxes. Boxes can be drawn at many sizes on various angles and their lines will converge to the vanishing points. If you get in the habit of drawing through these boxes, you'll be able to see all of their sides and edges. You can combine different boxes to block out whatever you are drawing before adding detail. In fact, this is all I do when I create a drawing in perspective. I block out the drawing using boxes and then work over the construction lines. The other techniques come into play here as well, for example the scaling, dividing and multiplication techniques come in useful when you want to draw a box at the same size as another in your drawing. You can work with the edges and planes of a box, and boxes can be used to establish the position of an object in perspective. If you don't believe me, then take a look at Kim jong Gi, a master when it comes to drawing in perspective. He always uses boxes, or in his case, he's often visualising them as he draws everything in detail. It's a huge step forward if you are able to draw boxes on various angles at different sizes, and it's something that I had to include in this video. So there we go, those are 5 perspective drawing techniques that I found are the most useful and practical when it comes to creating a drawing in perspective. As I said, I have a whole series on this subject so if you want to learn more techniques and have me discuss them in depth then be sure to check that out. Also, don't forget to have a look at the Design Journey Art class that I recently put together for Stedler, I'm sure you'll learn a lot there. But with that being said, thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one. If you enjoyed the content I create, then do consider becoming a patron on Patreon. You will gain access to exclusive tutorials, study documents, process papers, real-time drawing footage and more. Plus, you will also be supporting me in a more personal way. Other than that, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you soon.